Greetings, humble viewers. Cometh and see my bountiful program where I. Okay. I mean, okay. Um, I like it when it's a little funny at the beginning, but I don't think I can make fun of Disney because they're going to like strike me down faster than they're going to strike this video for like copyright. So, um, can we just. My name is Caleb Morgan, and as you can see, I am very happy to bring you back the beloved segment of Movie Snobs. You know, I mean, I would never consider myself a snob. Okay, um. I mean, maybe I would, uh, but I'm really excited to talk about all the big releases coming out this spring. Some big blockbusters have came and went with the unlikely hit Sonic the Hedgehog, which is a great movie, being one of the top grossing movies to start the year. But in this episode, we're not talking about a fast blue hedgehog, we're talking about a smart blue elf. Two of them, in fact. And that's right, I spoke in ye olde English for a reason. This episode, we're talking about Pixar's Onward. Onward is Pixar's 22nd feature film, and at this point, the studio is very well known in the cultural zeitgeist. We all know they have some of the best animation, innovative story concepts, classic characters, and well, make us cry. Not me though. Okay, yeah, um, I cry too. It's been nearly 25 years since Woody and Buzz went to infinity and beyond, dazzled us with revolutionary computer animation, and met a member of the Mount Rushmore of creepy kids in movies. Despite having a reputation to not miss, Pixar has struggled as of late. They've remained financially successful, but in my opinion, they lost their creative spark that got them to the top spot in animation in the first place. I mean, in the entire decade of the 2010s, they only had four movies that weren't sequels, and one of those was The Good Dinosaur, which doesn't count. And while some sequels were good and others not so good, I was very happy to see that they were releasing an original Pixar film to start off their new decade. But even with this return to original film, Onward has remained far under the radar, and I'm not entirely sure why. The film stars Chris Pratt and Tom Holland, two of Marvel's hottest commodities, and follows a decently creative premise that basically asks the question, what if Middle Earth had millennials too? I get that this isn't the most original world that Pixar has crafted, but I find it somewhat baffling that this movie hasn't garnered the attention of, say, an Inside Out or Coco. The film follows the trials and tribulations of a teenage elf voiced by Holland who struggles with the awkward time of being a, well, teenage elf. His brother Barley, voiced by Pratt, is a boisterous, unabashed nerd that can sometimes come off as an embarrassment to his family and his already socially impaired brother. The film begins with an introduction that essentially informs the audience that in the past the world was filled with magic and wonder, but then all the creatures thought magic was too hard and created a modern world almost identical to our current human world. And while this premise on paper sounds like a tired meme a grandma would post where wizards turn to their smartphones over their magic wands, one of the biggest miracles this movie pulls off is making that story element not annoying. Against all odds, Pixar doesn't beat you over the head with the fact that the digital age is making us lazy and stupid. In fact, for a movie with every mythical creature at its disposal, like mermaids, pixies, centaurs, wizards, and unicorns, that are somehow basically raccoons in this world, even though everyone else is not much different than a unicorn and can speak coherently, I mean, anyway, they all inhabit a world full of mythical creatures, and this movie doesn't even spend too much time indulging over the mixture of lazy millennials and mythical beings. Them not overdoing it with the jokes in there is a good thing. I'm glad I didn't have to see a scene where a Cyclops can't open its iPhone because they only have one eye, or a troll is an actual online troll, or something else. <sighs> and while there are plenty of times in this film that they do make jokes like that, I think they make them in the most tasteful and genuinely funny way that they could ever make them. Given the excess that they could have laid on, I'm just impressed with their restraint. Even with every Middle Earth being that they could use, I like that most of this movie is almost a buddy movie between Holland's character Ian, his brother Barley, and oh, oh my man, I forgot to mention the main thing that happens that kickstarts this whole movie. You know, the dad legs. You know, the, the dad legs. Yes, this movie has a dead dad. And for a trend that seems to be in a lot of teen and family movies nowadays, Onward of all movies is the most interesting and well-executed version of a dead dad story, if it's okay to call it that. Early on in the movie, not having his father there eats away at Ian on his 16th birthday, where he is celebrating yet another birthday without his father. And folks, if you thought that other Pixar movies were sad, I personally think this is among their saddest and definitely one of the most mature children's movies I've ever seen. There's a scene early on where Ian plays a tape in a boombox of his father that I won't spoil, but it would be emotional in an adult drama, let alone a movie that a lot of kids under 10 are going to see. I was truly shocked with the amount of detail they talk about a parent's death. I mean, I know Pixar's movies very well, and I know Coco was extremely heavy at times too, but this one, it hit hard, and as they say, it hit different. Barley's lines talking about how his dad was hooked up to tubes, not wanting to see him when he was in the hospital, and the general dynamic between the half-reincarnated version of their father who cannot hear, I mean, it's almost like a ghost story in a way, where the children get one last chance to interact with their deceased dad. 
But, I mean, it's not like Ghost Dead. It's way better than Ghost Dead. And while the emotions are much more intense than I expected, I want to say that the comedy is also much better than it needed to be. And I know that jokes and references that I don't expect to see in a children's movie obviously enhance the humor. It's also just genuinely funny. But come on. For a kid's movie to have a scene that includes jokes about lengthy gap years, tax evasion, biker gangs, annoying stepdads, and other content that I don't want to spoil yet, I found myself constantly laughing and shock and awe. And speaking of things that left me in awe, this movie looks stunning. People freaked out about the cat in Toy Story 4 looking like a real cat with all the dust particles flying around and whatnot, but there are countless scenes in Onward that leave me with the same amazement, leading me to think that this is truly one of the most impressive pieces of computer animation that I've ever seen. I mean, I personally think more people should be talking about this. Most of the movie takes place at night, and among things in animation that is technically difficult, it is water, fur, and lighting at night. And in Onward, it is often accomplishing all three of these feats at the same time, and it looks incredible and seamless. And in general, with the 80s aesthetic, fun creature designs, vast array of settings, this movie would be a treat to watch with the sound off. All around, Onward surpasses all the odds. Oddward, you could say. Oh, sorry. For an under-the-radar movie from one of animation's biggest players, it is laugh out loud until the people next to you get annoyed funny. Drop dead gorgeous to look at, and a very poignant piece on dealing with loss and appreciating your loved ones while they're here. All of this comes together to create one of my favorite theater-going experiences this year, and even got a tear out of ye old me at the end. Overall, I mean, I give this movie a very strong 8 out of 10. And if you're curious as to whether or not you should take anything I just said with a grain of salt, I wanted to give you all my complete ranking of all 22 Pixar movies. But I mean, if you don't agree with me, you can go f Yeah, that's right. What? You disagree? You think my review is whack now because it's not the same as yours? Well, I'll tell you what to do about it. I'll tell you exactly what you can do about that. You can tweet me at ZTV goofing off using the hashtag movie snobs and tell me how you really feel about what movie I should review next. Please. I dare you. I doubled it. I Bye.